All right, let's jump back in. Totally, I don't want to change anything yet. I have only have not played too too much with it yet, but we'll jump back in. Might not get the whole next league done, but we'll get some of it done at least. Yeah, Philly's a little... I think it's because... So my wife's gone on a trip for the next two or three days. Or next two... Next about Well, probably about ten days, to tell you the truth. I think. I have to look on my calendar. But my dog's a little bit overexposed, overstimulated, because I had to take him to work with me today. Oh, I gotta shit my hand. Fuzzy done. All right, we'll keep this. It's not great. We need a black source. Pretty bad. At least my opponent hooked me up with a mulligan as well. Put on top. Wooded foothills. My opponent's playing Jund as well. Okay. Now they're playing Dredge. Now they're playing Hollowed One. Don't do it. Nice. Though I did lose my Tarmogoyf and my land, which sucks. Those are the two of the cards that I would have wanted. But at least we get to kind of... No, oh, that sucks. We do nothing for our opponent. <laughs> Here comes... My thought sees that only did me two life. Oh, he top deck up. No, but I guess... Okay, that's not bad. I'm gonna need a threat pretty soon. That is a threat. Cannot cast it, though. So two, four, I play this, 12. Am I like on fast mode to get this Death Shadow down before my opponent draws out of this? I probably don't want this game going too much longer. And I do have a couple lightning bolts. So should I just go Thoughtseize? Thoughtseize 14 to 10, play my Death Shadow there, three threes. I can just block these if I need to. Yeah, I'm just gonna do that. Try to get my Death Shadow down, because then, then like, it just if I draw a red land, then my the race will speed up. Here, it will speed up for myself. Like, play on the land, play the red land next time. We go down to ten, and then we just start like lightning bolting them, taking turns off the clock. So they held those, which is smart. Hopefully, they don't, hopefully they didn't draw a bolt. Okay. Okay. Just good draw. Faithless Looting could enable a lot of stuff. So they ditch their two lands. If that's like if they have a Gurmag Angler, that's pretty bad. Block one. Comes back. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna attack. Put them to 12, and then if they attack me again, I just play another Death Shadow. They're gonna need like a lot of lightning bolts to kill me, I think. Or they have to present blockers, which I don't have anything of at the moment. And all I have to do is draw, like, a red source, and then the lightning bolts are going to probably, like, do a pretty good job of s finishing this game up. <laughs> My opponent has double bolt, then I'm dead. But it'd have to be two out of their three cards, and I guess they get a look with Faithless Looting as well. Yeah, here comes a lightning bolt. Paying costs, I can't imagine what else they're doing. Hmm. Yeah, that sucks.
There's actually no way they can bolt a Death Shadow to kill it here, because even if they bolt before damage, the Death Shadow grows when damage happens. Lightning Bolt, Lightning Bolt. Flame Wake. Okay. Fetch Land. Nice. So we're not going to go into one Lightning Bolt range. So I'm going to get a tapped Blood Crypt. Fatal Push this. And then get in for 16. Which should be enough. So these can't block. Blood has to be messed up if it can block. Okay. So this is what's really annoying about this deck is I just don't know how to sideboard. I don't think I want to mess around with these Bloodbraid Elves. I think I just want to be on like the team or battle rage plan. Probably cut like a brutality. Maybe one more, then keep one of these. If the pushes aren't great, I'm gonna try to board in the stubs on the play to where I can get under like a burning inquiry. Alright, this hand's pretty good. It's probably going to get all switched up, but Liliana of the Veil is, like, situationally really good, because it can get rid of, like, um, get rid of, like, the, the hollowed ones and the Gurmag anglers in order to, like, make sure that my, make sure that the Flame White Phoenix and stuff don't come back, but it can just be really bad. They will defy. That sucks. Uh, go get Blood Crypt. Check out there. So they have angler, angler, angler. They put a card on the bottom. I kind of just want to take this big game hunter before it can get madness out. Because my death shadow is going to be able to handle this angler eventually. I'm just going to take this before this like two for ones me. They're not close to casting the angler <laughs> to be a rainmaker. Play Hollow One. Whatever that means. What is a what is a rainmaker, Johnny? So now I get Overgrown Tomb. Play Death Shadow. Leave up Bolt and push. This is something where we do have like we have a convenient amount of removal where we're probably going to be able to snipe this angler with a Liliana. I might play this deck in the challenge. Maybe we'll play in the challenge on Sunday, Johnny, on Saturday. I won't stream it because you're streaming, but like, maybe we'll end up duking it out. Burning Inquiry. Okay. They got rid of my veil. They got rid of their angler, which I'll take. Not gonna block it. What is this? It's dead. Leave my lightning bolt around. Wait. Eight. Can't quite get him unless I can deal six to myself, make this nine. Yep. Bolt myself, team or battle rage. Turn three, get out of my face. 
that's why, like, I mean, I don't, I don't want to be critical because I think the Jun is like a very good deck as well. But this is the this is the difference here. If you're not ready to beat Boggles, dude, you're not going to beat them. That's just how Boggles is. You're just, you're just not making words. I have to take my dog out one more time as he didn't go. He's being such a kind of a pissant today. I mean, like, I took him to the office and he might have overstimulated him a little bit at the office. Like, we did a lot of walking. Maybe, like, it's a little too much for him. Maybe we need to, like, take it easier or I need to just work from home or something like that. But he was really good during the day, then came home and took a nap, and then was kind of all over the place. Oh, you lost the goblins? I don't, know. I don't have anything to tell you then. I don't really know anything about that deck. I should have mulliganed. I don't know enough about goblins to, like, give an informed decision on if that deck's actually, like, playable or not. I wonder if in the Death Shadow Mirror you're supposed to stubborn denial their like turn you're probably supposed to stub their for their turn one thought scour. Alright, so we're not gonna get mooned. We might get mooned. Yeah, whatever. My opponent's gonna moon me, they moon me. What? Shadow of Doubted. All right. Somebody is not messing around. That means I can't even get my Death Shadow into play. Well, oh shoot. Oh, ho, 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 ho. shoot. It's literally been years since I've played against Shadow of Doubt. Ugh. Ugh. Now I could actually get mooned? No. Alright, well, we found the swamp. Alright, I think I'm going to check what my opponent's doing here before I play both my Death Shadows. Literally just completely forgot that this had text beyond, like, the stifle my land thing. Probably gets countered. Command. Okay. Probably leave with it next turn. Nice thing is, even if we get mooned, we can play around it. Yeah, you just like, there's so many random cards you play in modern. That's gross. So now I need to play both my Death Shadows and hope that they live. Fate Sealed. I'm gonna get Jaced out of this game. And it's all because of a stupid shadow of doubt. All right, they put a card on the bottom. At least we have Bloodbraid Elves to draw to, which are really good. And I can get this Jace off the board next turn if they don't like answer my deaths, both death shadows, because my Colagon's command can like shock myself and bring back a Street Wraith. So each one of my Death Shadows can grow four points next turn without even worrying about, like, my draw step. If he kills both of them, then I'm in a lot of trouble. But I had to play them both out just because of the nature of... There's a Jace there. That Jace is going to kill me. Okay. All right, we're not going to play this game much longer. He just bounces it. Yeah, we're good. All right, we're going to play around Shadow of Doubt. The next one. So I don't think we're going to side in the counter spells. 
We're just going to fetch around Blood Moon, and we're just going to try to play a bigger game. Keeping the brutalities. I think just playing the Blood Bright Elf game was, is going to be better than playing a uh, hold a back counterspell game. I think just playing, trying to play over the top of the Jace with Blood Bright Elf is going to be better than trying to like plug the fingers and bob and weave a game around it. Who would like to play first? All right. Sands like a threat from being really good. <clears throat> Is I'm gonna be able to take three cards on one on first two turns of the game? I'll lead on this just in case we don't want to take like a million points of damage. What? All right, I'm gonna take this search. I can deal with this. Then I'll probably take the remand. Anything that like gives my opponent the chance to filter out this draw. It's out of a greedy keep. If I do say so myself. Hit the land, you don't say. I'm going to take the remand, and then I'm just going to get an overgrown tomb, and I think I'm going to take this Vendillion click. I can deal with the EE. The Snapcaster is not really going to do anything for a little while. I might be able to just like maneuver this game to a point where the Snapcaster doesn't matter. Hopefully this doesn't get bolted, or they don't find go like runner runner with lands. They drew a land. Oh my gosh! Just an all natural find the land drops. Gross. What a three draw steps. What a set of three draw steps. Holy shnikes. Yeah, we're good. We are good. Some serious, like I'm salty after that one. And that was just like, we just got got in both games there. Which happens to the best of us. I mean, there are sometimes like, people are going to play cards in modern that are not like, like there's a reason that Shadowed Out doesn't see any play. Like it's not a super great card, but you're gonna have those times where like if you bring something that's unknown, that people are just gonna get you. Like they're just gonna like, like he got me there. Completely ended the game on turn two. I have a discard spell, a removal spell, and this, but I don't like keeping four land hands. But we do play Blood Braille now. I, I, I'm going to try this out. We usually don't keep hands with this many lands, but ever since Blood Braille Elf came into the format and like it's become part of our game plan, I have been looking to change some things around. So this is going to get Overgrown Tomb. I'm going to bobble my opponent on their turn, because this is probably just taking a Blood Braille Elf. I don't really need to know what the top card is. All right, second Liliana. There's no need, no sense in exposing this card to a discard spell. It's called God's command. It's kind of gross. So here comes scavenging ooze. I'm just going to decay this on my main phase. So now I actually can just push this and then traverse for a Blood Bright Elf. Which sounds like a plan to me. I'm 
I'm just going to settle in for the long game here. My opponent, like, K commands, which is probably what's going to happen. Then I'll just save this Liliana for an Edict. Go punished for playing the basic there, which is my mistake. I'm probably going to ditch my Abrupt Decay. Just keep all of my threats. Okay. They don't do anything. I didn't want to run the Liliana out there because it just gets like, oh, it just gets mauled by like a, a uh, treetop village. So I actually know three out of the four cards my opponent has. I want to get this tapped. I probably want to get a tap land. We're going to settle in here for the long game. I'm going to get Blood Crypt. Now, I might play Liliana and plus it now because they actually can't kill it with Treetop next turn. Their last card would have to be Lightning Bolt. He's finding what it's all, is what it's all about. I do have some decent hits, though. I do have a bunch of... I have some removal spells that are not good hits. That's pretty good. So that means, actually... So let's get rid of... Probably this Fatal Push. Like, I'll let him have the command. That doesn't matter. Just get rid of his efficiency. Now we'll play our Death Shadow. Now he's just kind of running on empty a little bit. But he can command back his scavenging news, but we have that covered six ways to Sunday. Tarp Life. Well, now I'm just going to erupt K at Traverse for a Death Shadow and play the Death Shadow. I just have such good options that it's not worth spinning the wheel. And I might as well just go for it. Or just be more efficient. That's another thing that's like different about this deck than Jund is that like you're so you're so mana efficient that sometimes that you can just do other things besides Bloodbraid Elf. Cause like I would rather kill his creature and put four more power on the board than um rather kill his creature and put four more power on the board than just to hopefully do that. So what is he getting? He is returning Tarmogoyf. I'm actually just going to ditch this Bloodbred Elf, I think. Well now, because he can place Tarmogoyf and he can eat it with the Treetop Village. That makes him waste his whole turn, basically. On the other way, I can put Cascade. And all of my hits are probably good, except discard spells. I actually don't know which one's better. I think that the Liliana's better. Yeah. We're going to keep the Liliana. It's just a safe bet. We are going to get, like, we're going to get probably... This, Liliana is probably going to trade for this treetop village. And if my opponent attacks, the Liliana will just let it happen, and then we'll attack through with our Death Shadows. Okay. So now we're going to get this Bob, I assume, because I doubt he's going to sack his, Tarm his Tarmogoyf. Ooh. We probably can wait on that. Though, God, I have such, I just have like so many good options that I just don't know. I probably just want to work, start working this Liliana, especially when it's not going to trade with this Street Dot Village. 
My opponent's last card's Black Leaf Glyphs. That's a good draw. That is a very good draw. So I'm going to double block this Goyf. Get one of them off the battlefield. Eats my shadow. Eats my elf. Then eats his bob. Scavenge is going to be a problem. Scavenge is not going to be a problem. I think I'm just going to leave this back to block this. Well, I guess this Liliana's not doing anything. So I might as well just get in here. If he wants to eat my Liliana, then he can. It's not doing anything, and like, I'm going to. Like, I don't want to be pressed in. That's gross. I don't want. So now we're both kind of at parity. It's like Treetop versus Death Shadow. So I top deck a little bit better than he does because I have Delirium. We do hit things like Bobble though. So we're gonna do this now. Hopefully this isn't like a, it's a Dark Confidant, okay. Hopefully we have two draw steps to find an answer to that. That is not one. Right after I start raving our top decks, we hit Bobbles. He's gonna crack me with the treetop. Get in there with a little bit of monkey business. Then he's got to play his Bob. Nice thing is if we hit Liliana, then we get his Bob. All right. Let's see what they're drawing. Get a little information. Fatal push. That's not good. But I do have to just get this thing off the battlefield. Oh, I uh, charge my... Computer. I guess I could have attacked, and if he hadn't, yeah, that was all stupid. I was worried about my computer charger, and I should have attacked first. Because if he attacks and doesn't block there, then I just brutality him out of the game. But I don't actually think that there's a world where our opponent does not block... There, give me one second. Let me just I need to fix my computer back here. Okay. There we go. Yeah, I was just stupid. I was worried about my computer and didn't give my opponent like the option to die. And now we're dead unless we hit here. Yeah, that was stupid. So stupid. So they just play treetop. And treetop smacks me. Yeah, this one's all my fault if this goes awry. Our best draw would be another Death Shadow. Because we can go Death Shadow and Liliana. No, I guess we can't. We don't have enough black sources. We could hit a lightning bolt or a blood red elf. Or we could die. Yeah, that was all that was all my fault. I mean, more than likely my opponent blocks there because they have to. Because then like most of their bob flips just kill them. But I still should have sequenced. Like I don't think it would have mattered, but I should have sequenced the game better there. Which is a little frustrating. And that was my fault.
I don't like these. These go. I think I've been doing this, been keeping the brutalities in just to pad my life total a little bit. This might be my last match of the night. I'm getting a little tired and I do have to get up early tomorrow. Oh, no land heater. All right. We're going to keep it scrying. It's not a land or we'll keep a traverse. We'll also keep a street wraith because that's also a redraw. All right, we'll keep this. Lightning bolts, okay. <coughs> um, I could just see what my opponent's doing with this brutality. Yeah. Overgrown Tomb, Blood Curse. And I think this might prompt the Bolt, which means at least I, next turn I can play my Shadow. Blood Crypt. Yeah, I have. It all, like, I'm choosing Blood Ray Elf to be my grind card. So I don't know if I need... I think I almost need the... All right. Uh, that hand is very good. I'm going to take the Command. But... My opponent draws lands. This is going to be a tough hand to beat. Yeah, I just think that I don't need, like with Blood Raid Elf, that's a good grind package over Lingering Souls, and the counter magic brings something to the deck that it doesn't currently have. So my opponent just slams this Liliana. I guess they have two Lilianas. Jesus Christ. I'll probably ditch my Blood Raid Elf if they play Liliana and tick up. last hope that is so that's egregious that is just an absolutely terrible play like this card is just so amazing in these matchups that like you just didn't you just traded it down for mana and didn't do anything with it they just go run around with lands uh tongue wife okay This off the battlefield. Okay, that takes. Now I gotta do some thinking. Like, which one of these can I answer? There's two Liliana the Veil, so I'm just gonna take this Blood Ray Elf. This is gonna be a tough one to win. There's just double Veil. Tom Wife. Land would be good. All right, I probably have to play this so that he points the lightning bolt at it and doesn't po point the lightning bolt at my head. Though he could just play his Liliana and Edict. This is this is the one advantage that you know my opponent does get is that they they play like a high, higher density of really powerful spells and they play more lands to be able to like you know continue to recycle them. All right, I'm gonna ditch my blood red elf. They ditch their Liliana. Last card's Maelstrom Pulse. So land. Off the top, and we got a game of magic. Nope. Nope. We just didn't find... There it is. There it is. It's right there. All right, well, that one was quick. We got Molly Watch quick, so we'll get back into it.
But that is the one advantage that like their deck can play over mine is that they can just play like a more clunky. Like they can keep a hand that's you know a bunch of four drops and three drops that's got like a high power level because you're just going to naturally draw lands more. That's just part of the deck. There they play more. You know, you can keep hands that are more suspect and your deck is going to like bail you out. The other side of the coin to that is there are sometimes when you're just going to like sit there and draw too many lands. Like you, when you're playing a 25 land deck and you don't have any filtering, sometimes like you're just going to, you know, flood out. And, you know, I was the opposite there. I didn't flood out, but also I couldn't cast my spells. So like that's kind of the, just kind of what you, the trade off. Not going to traverse on one, might traverse on two. And if that's worth it, then that's worth it, you know? I don't know. That's a matchup where Lingering Souls is really good. Watery Grave. How's it going, Brown? WVU? So we're playing a Death Shadow Mirror, it looks like. This Lightning Bolt's probably not going to amount to a whole lot. <clears throat> if they go, like, Delve card here, we're... We're gonna be in good shape. Straight race. All right, come on, play a Delve card. Play a Delve card. Play a Delve guy. Yeah. It's getting double green is good in this matchup because Tarmogoyf is very good. that. I'm going to hold that for now. Eat this. I assume this matchup, I, I think I got, I got to a point in this matchup where I felt comfortable with it, but I would assume that it gets worse after cutting Lingering Souls from my sideboard. This is like a K command or a Lightning Bolt. Thoughtseize, take your pick, man. Probably takes command or decay. If he has something like a death shadow, that probably he takes decay. Yeah, incoming death shadow. Though five. It's one death shadow. Two death shadows. Okay, well, I can deal with one of them. Okay, so I can get one of them off the board by fetching black, black, tick up. So you, I get rid of all four of my cards to do that. But I get, we get them both down to one card, and then I get to traverse. He has to attack Liliana, but I have Delirium. So let's go up. I ditch this. And then just hope to God that my opponent doesn't have a Street Wraith. Okay, didn't have a Street Wraith. So they probably get rid of this. Then we traverse for like either our own Death Shadow or a Bloodbraid Elf to kind of get us a little more velocity. Okay. Now we just definitely go get Blood Ray Elf. And then just hope to God that my opponent doesn't stubborn deny all this.
That's not great. It is nice that this resolves. Okay, fatal push, stubborn denial. <coughs> I could just take stub, and then if I draw a way to kill this death shadow, I'm in good shape. So this puts me to seven. Death shadow's still five, so I'm not dead, but I can't attack. Yeah, I'm gonna take stubborn denial. Just so that if I draw, like, I then I have more ways to kill this thing. Okay, so that just kills me. Yep. And I was playing around, like, I was hoping that didn't come, because then, like, if I drew a way to remove this, I could. Or, like, draw another traverse to add to the battlefield that I could, and I was just hoping that they missed on that. Which is, like, the gamble I took. Um... I don't actually like K Command 2 too much in this matchup, and it might be different with Bloodbraid Elf. I do not know. So let's go like this. <laughs> well, I can't. Such is life there, Johnny Boy. Oh, I'm tired. And the re I think I was playing to win with that line, like as in playing like not to lose. All right, hands. Got to give it the old keep. We're gonna keep a land. We're gonna shuffle away anything that's not a land or a traverse. Because if I get his death shot off the board there, then I'm in good shape. And I'm sure this matchup gets worse. Like I said, without lingering souls. It is nice that K-Command can just bring this back. All right, we're just gonna get rid of that Gurmag Angler. Cause my opponent's just dirtling without the Angler. There's the Bloodstained Mire. All right, we're on the board. Which is nice. I have to take the dog out one more time, too, as he didn't go last time, so that'll impede my... make me have to get off a little sooner. This is a Thought Scour. Oh, I found Fatal Push. Okay. Well, now if my opponent goes a little too nuts with the cantrips, then I can at least command this shadow back. But maybe you just reserve the commands for the Bloodbright Elves. Okay, so he gets my command. So I know my opponent's hand to the T. It's a good draw. My opponent, fine. My opponent should opt, not thought scour, because they're looking for land to recur that fatal push on my death shadow. And I'm probably getting this land tapped, probably like a stomping ground. So my opponent should opt, not Thought Scour. Yep, that's the right play. It's a good play from the opponent. Put a card on the bottom, so it wasn't a land. Okay. Let's complicate things a little bit, because it could be Death Shadowing us. If they are death shadowing us, we're gonna have to think about how to fetch. <clears throat> so we didn't hit a land. Okay. So let's spin the wheel. Probably can get a Blood Crypt. And then this comes is just a Swamp. 
knowing that like likely whatever I hit spin into here gets countered. And then I'm gonna cast it, like I'll make them use their card. Okay. And I actually can just attack with the Blood Bright Elf if I want to here. Cause well no, I'm gonna just I'm just gonna hold both of them back. I'm at low enough of a life total where there's no need to put that in jeopardy. Especially if I attack and my opponent finds a fetch land, they go, fetch shock hit this. Yep. That's what I was worried about. So now they push this. I need to find like a push of my own off of this Bloodbraid Elf. I'm just gonna take this. My opponent has a street wraith, they have a street wraith. Okay, so do I traverse for my own death shadow? Yes, but he just blocks Bloodbraid Elf and eats it because of how Death Shadow works. I can spin the wheel, or I can just traverse for my own Death Shadow. What can I hit? I think I would like to get one creature off the board to make it so my opponent would have to have two removal spells to kill me. So I think I am just going to spin this. Because even if I play just Traverse for a threat, then I die to a, like a removal spell. Okay. And again, I'm just going to hold back, make my opponent have two removal spells to kill me. Hopefully they don't have like a Lightning Bolt or Color Guns Command or anything like that. That's a good sign. A lot of draws just kill me. <clears throat> Alright, let's not get battle raged. Last two cards have to be removal spells, or we're in good shape. I'm going to traverse both of my cards first so my opponent doesn't stub me. Tight match. And we're just going to get on the board with both of our Death Shadows. Just get a bunch of 12-12s. And don't. Come on, don't do it. They're just sitting there. Okay, thank God. Tight match. I'm going to get some water. Before I think about the next one. <clears throat> yeah, I want to keep it the same. Sounds pretty good. We have like some defense, a little mid-range card. We got like two removal spells, 
a couple ways to go over the top. We could get picked apart by like an aggressive discard spell hand, which is why the discard spells are the best part of Death Shadow, in my opinion. Because he could just like take my fatal push, get a big Death Shadow quickly, and then get under this Liliana and just beat me out, just beat the brakes off of me. Things like a Delver deck. Okay. So we're gonna try, we're gonna get low enough to where if we hit, we can BBE into a Death Shadow and not have a die, but we're not gonna like, you know, get our life total so low. That's, that's dangerous. It's two lands right there. One, two, three, four, five. He's probably looking for a fetch land to get a shadow into play. This gets stomping ground. Should have gotten like a blood crypt, I think. Hey, take it easy, Johnny. All right, I'm gonna check out my top card. I love you too, Johnny. And we'll get this untapped so that our fatal push is turned on. Then we'll draw the two. Let's use a good draw. Kind of sculpt helps sculpt us next turn. This is where I wish I'd gotten a black source. I'm talking about when I should have got blood crypt. Okay. This probably takes Inquisition or Fatal Push. If they're setting up like a Death Shadow, they might just take Fatal Push and try to get underneath me. Took the command. Now oh, here comes a Delve card. Nasty Germasty. Liliana of the Veil off the top. Lightning but fail push, fail push. So I have this covered. I probably should just take this fatal push so that my opponent can't kill my death shadow. Now I should have taken the lightning bolt because I'm at a pretty low life total. Like, I'm at a virtual one at this moment. Yeah, and that lightning bolt kills my blood right off. That was just so stupid. I'm all over the place tonight. Main phase opt. Yeah, that was just so dumb. They do that. Put a card on the bottom. Yeah, that was dumb. So let's get Blood Crypt. So now I, if, I, if I spin the wheel, I have to find a way to, to kill this or defend myself. Now I just want to get my own Death Shadow into play because it's larger than this. I die to a Fatal Push regardless, but that would be Fatal Push number two versus dying on board to so many different like if I don't spin well if it's blood right off I just die so so let me traverse for a death shadow cross my face this was this is all my fault like I shouldn't have taken that push this loses to like snapcaster mage loses to a lot of different things Bolts me. Get another lightning bolt. Like this was just very poorly played by me. They play Death Shadow, okay? It's at 13. Alright. Why would they do that?
Okay. Now I'm just going to spin it, because if I hit a Liliana or a way to kill this, or like a Kologon's command, then they have to. If they played a, they had a Death Shadow, then I would change things, but they do have a lot of... There's a lot of... There's a couple cards that make it so that it gets this Gurmag Angler off the table. That is one of them. And that's... Unless they have a Bolt. Well, if they had a Bolt, they would have bolted me. Get that off the battlefield. Oh, there we go. All right. <laughs> all right, guys. I am crashing for tonight. I am exhausted. I will put all my videos up on YouTube. I appreciate everybody for being here and hanging out tonight. I'll be back later this weekend. I hope everyone has a good rest of their night.